Guten Morgen, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andreas and I'd like to talk a little bit about our audio setup for the TV show Late Night Berlin that I do with one of our Digico SD1296, some waves for a little bit of flavor, Pro Tools for virtual sound check and some other little tricks. Enjoy! If you're wondering why I am allowed to be here in the studio and not locked away at home, it is because Late Night Berlin has actually managed to meet all the strict requirements and guidelines and we are therefore lucky to produce even in these difficult times. Late Night Berlin is a show hosted by Klaas Häufer Umlauf and we have three musical elements in the show that I am working on. The first is the show band, or as we call it, the house band. It's actually Klaas own band called Gloria. They play all the opening music, the walk-in music for the guests, all the jingles and basically all music in the show. The second element are our singing games that we sometimes have. We have famous musicians and singers come in and they are singing their own songs but with different funny lyrics. Gloria is the backing band for this too. The third element is the musical guests on the show. Every week we have a different artist and that is what I spend most of my time on. Time is the most critical factor on our day simply because we have very little of it. I have 30 minutes for sound check and then 15 to 30 minutes for camera blocking depending on the artist. After that I have 30 to 60 minutes for virtual sound check and this is exactly the time where I can work on the mix. Then I have to be able to present a mix that can be broadcast. This means that I have one hour to recreate the album mix as detailed as possible or to provide a song in a new arrangement that has not yet been released with a suitable sound. Sometimes I have 8, 12 or up to 24 channels, sometimes I have 48 channels and then as you can imagine with starting from scratch I really have a lot of work to do in this one hour. Since we have a different guest every week there is of course no place for my sound or my own ideas, but it is always about reproducing the song as true to the original and in the interest of the respective artist. So I have to be extremely flexible in terms of sound. We produce the show on Monday. On Thursday before I get info about the artist and the song. From that moment on I have the song on my phone and listen to it as often as possible in order to memorize the song so I am optimally prepared. Let's have a look at the desk. As a quick overview for you, let's have a look at the channel list. Starting with the input channels, we have an acoustic drum set with an SPDS for additional sound as well. We have one bass channel, we have two guitars and we have one keyboard player for four keyboards. We have a vocal bass that's actually just a talkback microphone for the musical director. We have of course a click. Then we have four wireless microphones that we use for our singing games or for our singers. Next we have, oops, sorry. We have my effects that I have set up. These are coming from Waves, so the return channels. As you can see here, a little inconsistency. I decided later that I want to have six effects and not only four. So I have an oscillator uh, in between. Um, this is the drum plate for Gloria for the drum set. And this is an internal effect as a spare. 
And then coming up, we have our 48 channels that I use for the guests. We have effects, scents, very simple. Uh, one plate for the drums for Gloria and my six waves effects. Next, we have the groups. For Gloria, I have four groups for drums, bass, guitars, and keyboards. Those four, again, go to one group as a sort of master fader for Gloria. And then coming up, we have all the groups that I use for the guest bands. We have two drum buses, the second one for parallel compression, bass, guitar, PB is uh, labeled for playback, or sometimes I rename it for keyboards, depending on what we have. Lead vocals, backing vocals. And then we have one of my special little tricks, if you want. Um, everything I do goes either to a music bus or to a vocal bus. Those two I have here on the surface, on my master faders, so I always can balance very quickly vocals against music. If the music gets too loud, I can make it a little bit softer. Or if I need to write the vocals, I always have that here, which makes it very fast. Those two again, as you can see here, go to the master fader. And those go, down, go then out through matrix faders. Some spare groups for bigger setups that are not labeled at the moment. Then we have matrix outputs. Left, right is here in this room, my uh, control room speakers. TV left and right is the mix that we send basically away. Next special thing is we have PA music and PA vocals, a mono mix of each, because we um, decided that we do not create a separate front of house mix for the audience, but we use my mix, my broadcast mix here from this room that I also send out to the muse to, to the PA for the audience in the studio as a music and vocals bus. So my colleague down in the studio can rebalance that a little bit. If we have a loud band, acoustically loud in the studio, he can bring down the volume of the music fader and push the vocals a little bit more. Matrix 7 and 8 are not used. I only use one control group for Gloria. It's just for overall level. I set that once a year and then I can basically forget it. And that's about it for the channel list. Next, let's have a look at how I lay out all the channels on the console. Starting on the first layer, here I have the drum set, the bass, guitar number two, because number two is actually panned in the broadcast mix to the left side, guitar number one to the right side. I have those here, so I always can find the guitars very quickly. Keyboard channels, talkback for the musical director, and then our four singing microphones and the internal um, spare effect. That's my first layer. Second layer, is on my left side the VCA, the control group for Gloria, never use it. Click track, never use it here. Very handy for editing in Pro Tools if we want to fix something later. I always recommend recording the click track, comes in very handy. Oscillator uh, for setting up the day in the morning. My drum plate. Uh, for Gloria. Then I have here on this layer as well my lead vocals bus because this layer it's also label effects I mainly use for my six effect returns as you can see here at the moment I have the effect send for effect number four which is always my delay and I do not have the return channel for effect number six here at the moment because I haven't used it uh, lately that much so I can send into the delay and also have the 
level of the delay here on this fader, which is my return fader. So basically, this is my effects layer. Here are all the aux master faders. I rarely use it. Of course, doubled up here with the delay sand, as you can see at the moment. Next layer is here. I have my QLab channels for listening to the track as a reference. Again, I have my four of those effect returns just to be able to have them always quick. I have channel number 48 because sometimes we have a hardwired lead vocal and that is always in 48. And then I have lead vocal and backing vocal bus. This layer is actually very rarely used. Here on the right hand side, I have the master fader and my music and vocals fader that are here at the other side. I have them here in this layer so I can have the screen if I want to change compression settings or whatever. As you can see here in the vocal bus, I have a little bit of compression going on. Last layer is on this side is are, are my groups for Gloria, the drum group, the bass group, guitars, keyboards, and my Gloria master fader. And coming up next are the main groups, so to speak, for the guest artists, as we had in the channel list, drums for parallel compression, bass, guitar, lead vocals, backing vocals, all that stuff. So he lives here. And then again in front of me, I have the matrix outputs. Left and right is this room. TV left and right is the mix that goes out. PA music, PA vocals, and 7 and 8 is not used. And again, music vocals master fader, just to have that as one package visible what goes out in one layer, in one bank. Layer number two is my guest channels. They labeled Gast, which is a German word for guest. It's very simple. 1 through 12, 13 to 24, next 25, 36, 37 to 48. So I have on the second layer my 48 guest channels, which is where the mix for all the guest bands happens. Then I have the groups for those channels. Here again I have the master faders again. VCA layer, never used actually, talkback layer, never used. That basically is everything that I have in front of me. Layer 3, as you can see, it's not used at all. And back to layer 1, the house band. In the actual show, the only layers that I really use are the layers number 1, Gloria for the house band, my effect returns, and sometimes the group. If I find that I need certain channels on the day, then I might move around one channel. And everything I have to do when we switch to the guest band is change the layer. And I have the guest channels here. So very quickly, actually I put layer 3 away. Um, you can do that here. We don't need that. And then we're even quicker because we can change from 1 to 2. Um, that's actually my move to change, which is only once in the show, into the guest band is I leave layer 1, move over to layer 2, have my 48 guest channels, my groups for the guests, and I can very quickly go back to the house band settings. Important are my vocals and my music fader here because those I write all the time. So much for the fader layout on the fader layout on the console. A brief look at the macros I use. First button, very simple, safe session, nothing special. Second button, Gloria on and off, just simple mute groups, as you can see here, green, is everything in green is okay for me. Everything in a different color is supposed to make me look at it to get my attention. 
Same thing for the guest channels. If we go to the guest layer here, just very simple on and off. The most important button for the day is copy audio on and off. And it has a special trick on it. The moment I engage listening to copied audio, as you can see here, the feeds into the studio are getting muted. So that way I always make sure that when I work on my mix here, down in the studio when they rehearse something else or they have the audience coming in or whatever, I do not send anything into the studio. So my copy macro at the same time uh, mutes those macro outputs. As you can see, where is it? Copy on mutes those two matrix outputs at the same time. Very neat, very handy that I can trigger complete different functions with one button. Love that. Uh, waves on and off is just very simple in the groups. I can show you here. As you can see, it's just a simple insert on and off for the waves. And on the second layer, I have aux to faders. Again, very simple effect sends to faders. You know that. That's just the window on the second page. So much for macros. Nothing too fancy going on here. We started using Super Rack in January 2020 before we used, of course, Multi Rack. And I have to say, I love the new layout. I love a lot of features of the new features. Um, the first one is custom layers. So let's have a quick look at what I do here for Late Night Berlin. First strip is the Gloria channels, drums, bass, guitars, keyboards, inserted in the groups in the desk. And of course, we have the summing bus for Gloria here. Just a quick look at what we do here. Uh, parallel drum compression just 35% put in here for, for a little bit of beefing up the drums, followed by the API, just for the loud notes a tiny little bit. Um, this boy here, since we can't use any third-party plugins at the moment in Super Rack, um, I was a heavy user of the Sonox Inflator and I can't use it anymore. And um, that was the closest thing that I could find that does was what the inflator does. Um, I have to admit, now I love the Shep's parallel particles, but I can't change the sound mid-season, so I have to stay with that. And maybe next year, when we do a new season, I can change uh, plugins, and then I might use the parallel particles thing, because I love it. Um, this year is a sort of inflator, just a little bit on 20%, followed by the classic L1, just to hit a little bit the loud no notes. As you can see here, it barely touches anything. Um, bass, our bass, classic, again, a little bit of limiting. Guitars, Renaissance Axe, just to even out a little bit the two guitars. No inflator, I'm sorry. Um, and L1 doesn't even do anything here. Keyboards, wide spreading, so the guitars are panned, of course, and the keyboards even wider to create um, width and space. Followed by, again, sorry, no inflator, and just an L1 again to, to make sure that nothing escapes. Uh, that's wrong here, so we go here. And the summing bus, again, the API, a little bit of, I don't know what that is, we can see it here actually, 15.8, <laughs> parallel compression, and an L3, just to make sure that 
we have an even level for the whole band. So much for the Gloria setup. Uh, for the Gloria drums, I use H reverb. Um, on the master fader, as you can see, I don't have anything. I have an F6, but that's not active. That's just as a sort of second analyzer. I have an RTW here, as you can see. Don't use it actually. Um, and then we have a little bit of Smack Attack and Sheps 73 on the single channels for a kick, snare and our mono microphone. For our guest groups, of course, that's different every week. And this setup now, you can see, we didn't have a live band in, 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 in this particular show. Um, so some plugins are not even active. This changes every week what I put in here, because it really, really depends on what we have. But basically for the drums, parallel compression for the drums, Piano, keyboards, guitars, whatever comes along. Lead vocals, backing vocals, of course, that's in every week. A little bit of Fairchild and a little bit of L2, just to make sure nothing, nothing really escapes. And then we have the layer that I use most. That's our wireless microphones and the effects that I have here. Again, as you see, I have the lead vocals and the backing vocals strip here as well. That's great with the custom layers. So no matter which layer I'm at, I somewhere always have the lead vocals and the backing vocals. And that's great. Couldn't do it before. So a typical strip for a wireless microphone would start with a little bit of noise reduction, followed by an active EQ followed by an de -esser. and I just love the sound of it. Just barely touching the needle, one, two dBs of gain reduction with the Puig Child, Fairchild. Baby, I love it. Six effects. As you can see here, I only use one. All the others is stuff that I used once. They're deactivated. Because, again, every week different artists, so different effects. Um, my main reverb is either an Abbey Road plate or a Lexicon 480 emulation. What else have we used? Yeah, Imager, H-Reverb, Delay, Doubler whatever, have a setup, have a delay set up all the time because sometimes we use it. That was uh, where we had the effects send fader here, H delay. Um, yeah, number five, number six, not used that much. Page number four, I think is blank. Yep, um, that's basically what we have in the wave setup here. We have, of course, local IO. We have one rack, it's a D2 rack for Gloria. We have another D2 rack for the guest because it's on the other side of the studio. We have, of course, our waves. We have the built-in USB that I use for QLab and stuff. And we have a connection to front of house where I'm sending my mixes to. We have a connection to the broadcast control room where I'm sending my mix to. And we have 128 channels of recording for virtual sound check. Next to the desk here, I have a monitor controller so I can switch between uh, my mix and the program mix and between the big speakers and the small speakers, and of course my volume, I have a real intercom station. I have the Waves Access computer with a nice drawer here. And I have two OptoCore DD2s. Those are used solely to create more MIDI ports for the console. And of course, a UPS at the bottom. 
so much for our little insight into our production methods for broadcast mixing. Maybe one or the other was interesting for you. I would be happy to hear from you. Don't be shy. I like to read your comments. And always remember, vorm Löschen noch ein Backup machen. And always remember, vorm Löschen noch ein Backup machen.